everyone. Welcome to Ripple Lodge's Stork Side here in Woodbridge. I am Jessica Maria Alsaya, Stork Site Manager with the Stork Preservation Division. And today we're inside Ripple Lodge again, but we're going to do a little something different. You've seen my coworker Nate McDonald talk about the history of the lodge, giving you a nice tour of the inside, as well as giving you a look at how the original front side of the building looked before the 1920 renovation. But today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to take you outside to get creative with art. Artists have been painting outside for centuries, but in the 19th century in particular, painting by natural light was extremely important, and therefore many artists started painting outside on plein air. What's painting outside on plein air? Well, it's French, and simply put, it is the act of painting outside. Artists like Pierre Augusta Renoir, Claude Monet, Vincent Van Gogh, Winslow Homer, Marie Cassatt, so many great artists in the 19th century started painting outside, and many of them were advocates for painting by natural light sources. Here is a great example of one artist painting on plein air, and the subject of this painting is another artist painting on plein air. It's by John Singer Sargent, and it was done in 1885. It is an oil on canvas that you can find at the Tate Gallery in London. Artists have been painting on plein air here at Ripper Lodge since the 18th century. We are fortunate enough that Benjamin Henry Latrobe, architect, artist, and designer of the United States Capitol, was here in 1796 and created two of the earliest known images of our location. Also, in the 1950s and 60s, our last owner, Eliza Black, wife of Richard Blackburn Black, also painted here on plein air. And here's another great portrait that she did of the River Room. All right, so you're inspired, you're intrigued, you want to challenge yourself, you want to paint outside on plein air. But you're going to need materials. So I've got you covered. First and foremost, you're going to have to pick a location. So look in your front yard and your backyard and see what you're feeling you want to paint. Whether it's a flower or a tree, find something that's inspiring to you. Now you're going to need your supplies. First and foremost, you're going to need a flat surface to paint on. Now I have my easel and board here and you may not have that at home. So you probably want to get a plastic table, a patio table, or if you want to be a little more mobile, you're going to get your clipboard and some paper. Now, paper is crucial when it comes to watercolor. If you're choosing to do watercolors, you're going to need watercolor paper or a heavier paper because it holds the water a little better. The fibers won't break down as fast. But if you don't have that at home, Plain paper or construction paper or a matte finished uh, board paper, cardstock will work just fine. Now, your paints. I, there are two types of paints. Most of you are probably familiar with these types of paints. These are your simple watercolor paints you can find anywhere. Or uh, you can find a bigger palette like this one. But for me, I have my artist watercolor paints over here. Um, so they come in separate forms. If you're not going to do watercolors, you can do acrylics or oils. And for our very young artists who may not have the paints at home, I'm going to bend the rules a little bit here and allow you to use crayons and color pencils. Or even the chalk, it's called a pastel, and they come in two variations. A chalk like a sidewalk chalk, and then another one that has an oil base to it. Now, brushes for painting are critical. Your kids like this will come with their own brush. However, you can get a variety of brushes, and they have different sizes, different bristle types, as far as maybe being more natural, more synthetic, and they all kind of paint differently. So if you have the opportunity to find some different size kit brushes, do so. For those painting outside on a clipboard or on a table, bring some paint to take with you so that your paper won't fly away. Finally, since you're going outside, you're going to need water. Not just for your watercolors, but for yourself. And you'll need things like sunscreen, bug spray, and a hat because you will be painting outside. And you shouldn't wear sunglasses if you can avoid that at all possible because the tints on sunglasses will sometimes change the color you're actually seeing. So you want to be as pure as possible when you're painting, so wear a hat instead. Or find a nice shade spot. Also, if you're going to make mistakes or you might spill water, a towel or a paper cloth will help you too. 
I'm now going to share some of my tips and techniques when it comes to painting. And I encourage, again, all of my artists, enthusiasts, and instructors out there to also share in the comments some of their tips when it comes to painting outdoors and using watercolor. Now, watercolor is a great medium to use. However, it can be sometimes unforgiving. So first and foremost, make sure you find a palette to put your paint on. This is my artist palette. It's a big tin, um, but it works just fine. But you can also use uh, the top of your painting lid here as your palette too. Don't just swish your brush in here and then go on here. You always want to dab your paintbrush a little bit. And I'll explain why in a second. When it comes to painting watercolor, you want to start off, at least I find, going from light to dark when it comes to the color. You want to block some of your certain sections off very lightly with a light brush of blues and greens because if you start off too dark, like you see here, it is very unforgiving. I will not be able to lighten that up. But it's a mistake and I'm just going to keep going with my painting. Also, when it comes to your paintbrush, don't do this and then put it on your paint. Too much water is dripping, and it's with this, with my easel, it's gonna make the colors start to run. So you definitely only want to dip the tip of your brush, take some of that excess water off, maybe even dab it on your paper towel or cloth before you touch the paint. With watercolor, again, starting off light to dark, and you're gonna layer it. So when you start, you need to let your painting sit for a while and dry. Unless you're going to want your colors to bleed, you're going to need this to dry so that you can apply another color on top of the ones you already have. And you can see here that I started off with a light wash of green, but then I came back with another green. And I'll keep going further and further as I go into more detail in my painting um, so that the colors start standing out and you can see some sort of dimension. Now, when it comes to architecture, for me, I find that I'm going to sketch it out first, just to give me a little bit of a reference to the size and the shape of the building. Architecture is a little more difficult for me to paint, but I'm going to challenge myself and do it anyway. So, take a number two pencil or an artist pencil if you have it, make sure it's sharp, and slightly sketch on the side of your pencil. You don't want to use the point because you'll come up with a really sharp, hard line and that's gonna come through on your watercolor. So definitely remember to use the side. And if you make a mistake, luckily, you can use your eraser and fix it. With painting, remember, you're gonna make mistakes. You need to practice. And if you're not so certain just yet to do a big landscape like this, you can always start off small and work your way up. If you wanna just practice with the paints themselves, see how they run and how they look and how they layer themselves. Do something small at first so that you can get the feel of the colors too. And remember, your mistakes are things that you learn from. Other artists out there, major artists, the masters, all made mistakes and they practiced. They did something called an artist study. And before they started something, they would sketch it out or paint it out, use different materials, in order to figure out the exact look and the exact feel and to actually know what they're painting before they sat down and did their masterpiece. So practice is okay. I'm going to stop for a second and talk to my artists out there who maybe aren't feeling so certain. They are a little nervous about painting. They maybe feel that they can't even draw a straight line. Or you've ordered those supplies online, but you're waiting for them to come and you want to be outside and you want to be creative. Or for some of you, it's too hot, it's too humid. My allergies are acting up, which mine are today. Um, you can still be creative and you can still go outside. So we're going to kind of diverge from plein air painting and we're going to still create painting with technology. Okay, I know my artists, enthusiasts, and friends out there might get a little upset at me, but we are trying to encourage all artists of all ages to do something outside and become creative. So please bear with us. I have a friend and colleague of mine, Derek Mertzall, 
who is the Curator of Education at the Sam Houston Memorial Museum in Texas, who is also an avid photographer. He's quite good. And he's taken some of his photographs that he's done either with a camera or even his phone, and by using technology, turned them into watercolor. So I know it's bending the rules a little bit, but it's still a lot of fun. For those of you who are more tech savvy, may not feel comfortable yet with painting, or don't have your supplies just yet at home, you can start painting by doing this. So uh, make sure you find something outside that is intriguing to you. And with it being a lovely spring day like it is today, there's plenty of flowers blooming, there's bugs outside, maybe you've got your pet at home, anything you want to take a picture of, start taking pictures of them. And once you find a great angle and great light, you're going to then download an app, whether it's on the Apple platform or your Android platform. Um, make sure that, number one, you research the apps you're about to download. You need to find out what they can do and also read some of the comments from the other users to make sure that they're not buggy or anything like that. And also for all my young, young artists, to make sure you ask your parents before you download it. Well, I'm going to take this picture here of Vermont and I've kind of kneeled down so I can get an interesting angle and I'm just going to click it. Now, when I download my app at home, I'm going to take this picture and using the app's instructions, turn it into a watercolor. So today, just to recap everything, we've talked about on plein air painting, some of the artists who made it, some of the materials you need to paint outside, as well as some techniques, and hopefully we've read some of the comments below with our other artist friends who are helping us out here today. We've also learned that you can use technology to create paintings as well. But there's one thing I want all my artist friends to remember, is that whatever you make, is going to be uniquely yours and it's going to be beautiful. Don't be discouraged. Keep practicing and share it with your friends and family. In fact, share it with us. Friend us on Facebook or tag us. We love to see what you've created outside. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Jessica Marie Alice from Urban Lodge and all my young artists out there, be safe, be creative, have fun, and I look forward to joining you again.